we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you're well aware, we're almost halfway through the last 10 days of Ramadan, and I'm sure some of us are finding it a bit difficult. But not to worry, brothers and sisters, because it was in the month of Ramadan that the Battle of Badr took place. You would think that the Prophet ﷺ would choose a month in which the Sahaba were not fasting and because when you fast, you become tired, you're, you're, you're weaker, you're hungrier. But nevertheless, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. If we had to do things our way, we would probably choose some other month. But Allah the Exalted will that this battle would take place in this month. The Muslims were newly settled in Medina. They're now actually getting settled in Medina. And this community of believers is being established. And on top of that, they're small in number. And in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will that this battle should take place. They were small in number. The community is not really fully established yet. It's just been about a year or a year and a half that the Sahabas migrated. They migrated in the, at the beginning of the 14th year of prophethood. And in the, the, the year after, a fasting in Ramadan was made compulsory. So it was in this month that all of this happened. And despite what may seem initially from our perspective as human beings as not a good time really, you know, we're small in number. We know from the reports of the authentic ahadith that the Muslims were a little over 300. 300 men facing an army of a thousand outnumber three to one and it's not just the numbers that was the problem when you look at the equipment because the Muslims never came out prepared for war for battle they came out with the intention of capturing the caravan on its way to Syria and they missed it and on its way back to Mecca they figured they would capture it but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had his own plans and despite the, the overwhelming odds being outnumbered three to one, despite not being really well armed, this battle would take place in this month when people had to fast and they were fasting. But nevertheless, at the end of it, the Muslims were victorious. <laughs> victorious not because of their numbers, because they didn't have the number. Victorious not because of their weapons, because they didn't have the weapons. But they were victorious because of their surrender and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite the physical hardships they must have faced, brothers and sisters, they did not say to the Prophet ﷺ, you know, because the Prophet, before the battle took place, he consulted the Sahaba there at Badr. What should we do? Should we fight or should we just retreat and go back to Medina? They did not say to him, you know, O oh, Messenger of Allah, this is Ramadan, we're fasting. Let's do this another time. They stood behind him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, the Prophet sallam, repeatedly asked the Sahaba, among them you have Muhajireen and Ansar. And the people of Mecca, the Muhajireen, you know, they were very outspoken. From the beginning they said, let's fight to a messenger of Allah. But the bulk of the army was made up of the Ansar, people from Medina. And the Prophet sallam, wanted them to also voice their opinion. And this is an interesting uh, uh, incident because it, it actually reiterates the Islamic principle of shura, consultation, or mutual consultation. And the foundation of shura in Islam is that when someone's life will be affected by a decision, that person has a right to be consulted. That person has a right to express how he or she feels. In the end, we may not really do what they're asking or how they feel, but they have the right to express themselves. And so when the Prophet repeated his, uh, his request, tell me what to do, and the Muhajireen kept saying, let's fight to a messenger of Allah, eventually the Ansar realized that the Prophet wanted them to speak. 
So one of them got up and he said to the Prophet ﷺ, O Messenger of Allah, it seems as if you want us to speak. You want to hear from us, meaning the people of Medina, the Ansar. And he said to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, we will not be like the people of Musa salam who said to Musa salam idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila inna hauna qa'idun. They said to Musa alayhi salam, you and your Lord go and fight, we will sit here and wait. This happened, if I can just, you know, divert a little bit, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa alayhi salam and his people Bani Israel from Fir'aun, and they crossed over into the Middle East from Egypt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that he will give them the city of Jerusalem to live in. But there were people, there were tyrants living there. So when they realized that there were these tyrants and, and bad people living there, they were afraid. <laughs> they said, قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى إِنَّ فِيهَا قَوْمًا جَبَّارِينَ وَإِنَّا لَنْ نَدْخُلَهَا حَتَّى يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا فَإِنَّا دَاخِلُونَ They said, O Musa, there are bad people, tyrants living there, and we will never enter it while these people are there. But if they leave, we will enter. They were ordered to fight. And they were promised victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the end, they said to Musa, Idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila. You and your Lord go and fight, we will stay here. So this uh, a Sahabi from the Ansar, he stood up and he said, O Messenger of Allah, we will not be like these people, the companions of Musa, Ashabu Musa, who said to Musa alayhi salam, you and your Lord go and fight, we will stay here or remain here. Rather, we say to you, go and fight, we are with you. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ seriously drew up his battle plans and organized his army into different battle lines and so on, and the Battle of Badr would take place. What is also an important lesson from the Battle of Badr, which happened, as I said, in Ramadan, according to the historians, on the 17th of Ramadan, this battle began, brothers and sisters, just a few days ago. Well. Uh, the anniversary per se. On the 17th of Ramadan, today is the 24th or 23rd, depending on when you started. But another important lesson of this battle, despite the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for victory and for help and support even with angels, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, after he did what he could possibly do as a human being in terms of physical preparations, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and raised his hands in prayer, in dua. And in fact, the Prophet alayhi salam, brothers and sisters, used to do this all the time. He would do what he could physically as a human being, but he never depended on his physical abilities alone. That is important. That is part of the equation, as we say. Allah says, وَاَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ In Surah Al-Anfal. Prepare for them what you can in terms of weapons and so on. So you're not going into, you're not going to do anything ill prepared. You have to prepare. You have to work. You have to strive. You have to do what you can as a human being. But the Prophet ﷺ also never depended completely on his physical abilities. He always, after doing what he could as a human being, would then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer and in dua, asking for his help and his support. And the Battle of Badr was no different. After he prepared his army, he went into his tent and he started to pray. He raised his hands in prayer. And he was very persistent in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and for victory. In fact, he said to Allah among the things he prayed, he said, Oh Allah, if this group of men are killed here today, you will never be worshipped in the land. That's how much he pleaded with Allah for his help and his support and his victory. So much so that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is standing there with him. And he thought that he felt that the Prophet was praying too hard as we say. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, that's enough now. Allah has promised us victory. But the Prophet ﷺ prayed. And in this is a major lesson for us brothers and sisters. I know we live in a world where people pride themselves in their skills and, you know, that's okay. We pride ourselves in our skills and our knowledge and our expertise. 
But that should not lead us to become unaware of the, the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all need to accomplish anything. Even the simplest task, we need the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day we do so many things, brothers and sisters. Right now all of us assume that once this short talk is finished, we will all be able to get up and leave. But we're only getting up with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For if He didn't give us that tawfiq, we will not get up from here. We will stay right here. So we need our physical ability, yes. This is where the human striving comes in. This is where working hard comes in. But at the same time, we also need the tawfiq or the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the Prophet taught us. So this is a very important lesson that happened during the Battle of Badr, which happened in the month of Ramadan. That despite our physical abilities and our expertise and our knowledge and so on, we should still put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to Him and ask Him for help and for assistance. I say to our brothers and sisters who are in school, after you've done all your revision for your exams, spend some time in prayer and make dua, ask Allah to help you. Ask Allah to help you remember your information. Because certainly, brothers and sisters, Allah the Exalted has the power to come between us and our hearts, as He mentioned <coughs> in the Quran. Know that Allah has the power to come between a person and his heart. So we can study all we want, but we can also go into the exam room and come up blank. At the same time, Allah the Exalted has decreed that without hard work, you're not going to achieve much. Although theoretically speaking, one cannot study anything, go into an exam and still ace it. Theoretically, that's possible. But practically and realistically, it doesn't work that way. But realistically as well, depending on one's physical capability alone, is not the attitude that the Prophet taught us. And so in this battle, after he did what he could, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he prayed and he prayed and he was persistent in his prayers, in his dua. So let us not be phased by the difficulty in waking up for Salat al-Tahajjud these last 10 days. Well, four of them have gone by, or three at least. Let us not be phased by this. It's difficult, yes. But nevertheless, remember the struggles of the Sahaba that they went through. They went through so that you and I today can be Muslims. So that you and I today are Muslims. So they did this struggle, not just for their forgiveness, they did it to establish the deen of Allah in the land. And for that, they put their lives on the line. We've been asked for a little bit less, brothers and sisters, a little bit of sleep on the line here. Not our lives per se, a little bit of sleep. So let us not be phased by the difficulties that are inherent. Remember, once we embrace the difficulties inherent in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will provide us with some ease. The ease will come from Him. Despite all that we plan, the ease will still come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He has promised us in the Quran, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ Surely with difficulty, there will come ease. Surely with difficulty, there will come ease. So let, let this uh, uh, not phase us. Let us continue, inshaAllah, to spend some time in praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these nights. Alhamdulillah, we're doing a lot already in terms of fasting, in terms of taraweeh, in terms of many other good things. But Salat al-Tahajjud in these last 10 nights are also, uh, is also uh, one of the best things we can do in these last 10 days in searching for Laylat al-Qadr. So continue inshallah, you know, be persistent, uh, continue to make the sacrifices it's only 10 days at most, and then it will end. And you know what? Many of us brothers and sisters, even though we find it difficult to go to wake up and then maybe get a few hours after Fajr only, 
and then get up again and go to work. Despite the struggle of the hardships, many of us, after Ramadan ends, we will still miss this Qiyam. We will still miss it. Now it's easy. We have, mashallah, prayed in, in these odd nights or in these last 10 nights where we're guaranteed to have prayed in Lalatul Qadr, yet we will still miss it. Although it's no longer there, although we can still wake up at Mutahajjud. Now before the time uh, expires, I just want to uh, deal with another issue regarding this. And this is based on a question that someone asked me. Uh, this year, some of us started on Saturday, the 28th of June, and others started on the 29th. And the question is, what about Laylatul Qadr? We know that it is one of the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan based on the authentic ahadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And the confusion or the question is coming from the perspective that those who started on the 28th of June, Saturday, their odd nights would be even nights for those who started the day after. And those who started on Sunday, the 29th of June, their odd, even, uh, odd nights will be even nights for those who started the day before. And we know that Laylatul Qadr is on one of the odd nights. So what would happen here? The answer, I believe, brothers and sisters, is that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much greater than to be limited by physical time and space. What is important is that we follow the process. Even if in the end we're wrong, and that we don't follow desires. Allah the Exalted will give us a reward, will give us the reward even if we turn out to be wrong in the end. But we have to follow the process. So it doesn't matter that one of the two groups has made a mistake in terms of when they started Ramadan. And the fact that for some people, Laylatul Qadr might be on one of the even nights. In fact, that's why some people say, well, let's just pray all the nights, all the 10 nights. This way, even if you made a mistake and it happened to be one of the evenness, you're still doing Qiyam. But even if you put this, this point aside, the reality still is that Allah's mercy and His grace and His, His Rahmah, His blessings, His uh, benevolence are much greater than to be physically limited by time and space. You see, brothers and sisters, we as Muslims ought to worship Allah based on what we believe is the right way. And so in beginning Ramadan, there are those who believe that this one way is correct and they follow that. And there are others who believe that a different system is the correct way as well and they follow that. This is an issue that has had difference of opinion since the days of the Sahaba. So it's not something that is clear cut that as some people may think it is. If it were clear cut, there would be no difference of opinion. MashaAllah, we would all be starting and ending on the same day. But what is important is that each one of us, we're trying to worship Allah based on what we believe is the right way. Now we could be wrong in the end. Even if we are wrong in the end, Allah the exalt is, is graceful, He will still give us the reward. The Prophet والسلام, said in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, إِذَا اجْتَهَدَ الْحَاكِمْ فَأَخْطَأَ فَلَهُ أَجْرٍ وَإِذَا أَصَابَ فَلَهُ أَجْرًا A judge, and by extension a scholar, if a judge or a scholar does proper investigation and research into an issue, but makes a mistake in his conclusion in the end, فَلَهُ أَجْرٍ He gets a reward. He is rewarded. And this is amazing, because in our world, we people are rewarded based on your result. If you're right, you get the reward. If you're wrong, that's it, you're on your own. But here, the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that in Islam things are different. That you may be wrong in your conclusion, but if you follow the process, you will get the reward. If he does proper research, proper investigation, and does not follow desires, but does a proper investigation, and he's mistaken in his conclusion, he still gets a reward. And if he is correct in his conclusion, he gets, the Prophet says, two rewards, double reward. But what is important, even those who may have made a mistake, they still get the reward. And so, 
the, the we should not worry about whether Lalat al-Qadr ha might happen to me on one of our even nights. If you're worried about that, then pray that night as well, brothers and sisters. But nevertheless, as I said, Allah's mercy is much greater than to be limited by this. And this should not lead us, by the way, to beginning to fight with one another and label one another as uh, deviants and as going astray and things like that. We may hold an opinion and we follow it as, as the right way. But at the same time, we do not uh, blame others who hold different views and do things different ways. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in our qiyam in these last 10 nights. May He help us to be able to pray and to make dua to Him and to remember Him in the night of Qadr. And may He accept from us our prayers, our qiyam, our dua and all our good deeds during this night and during all these uh, days and nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be among those whose fasting He would accept in Ramadan. May He cause us to be among those whom He will set free from the hellfire in this blessed month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be among those whom He would have forgiven in this month. May He cause us to be among those who are blessed with being able to pray and remember Him during Laylat al-Qadr. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.